Hey guys, today I will be going over how to make a tileable texture in a Blender. It is particularly helpful for game development. Um, the less textures you're using, the better performance you'll have. And as I will show you, I'm combining a bunch of different textures into one larger texture to save on draw call performance. Uh, I'm going to delete everything in the scene and add a plane. Add plane. All right, so that plane looks good. I'm going to go into edit mode and then subdivide it. Uh, my method of making a tileable texture um, really starts out with having four quads and a variety of flipping those quads will make it a tileable texture. Um, so I will go into detail about that. Right, let's go into UV edit mode and I'm going to unwrap those quads. And just the basic unwrapping is fine. Now I'm going to open my ref my image I'm going to use as the texture. Sorry, one second. There it is. Let me hide that. Oh, hide that. Oh, never mind. Okay, so uh, you can see here we have some water. We have a red texture and a uh, more beige texture. I'm going to be uh, tiling the beige texture, but it's going to be helpful later to have all these other textures available. That means uh, I'm going to also have some water in this scene and a bridge made out of the red texture, and that will mean um, the game engine will be able to draw all of those elements using one draw call since we're sharing the textures. Okay, so let's scale that down, pressing S. I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna making sure to give some padding around the edges because uh, for the game engine, if you enable MIP maps, um, it will often bleed in the other colors if you don't give some padding. Um, okay, I can't see the texture, so I'm going to press Alt-Z. That makes it so that the textures are visible. Um, so we have one texture applied, uh, but we want all of the textures to be that base texture. So I'm going to press Control-Tab and select a f the other faces. So let's move this face roughly into place. It doesn't have to be perfect at the moment. Move that face roughly into place and move the last one roughly into place. Um, so now we have a, a tileable, we have a texture that's kind of tiled, but you can see if you look closely that the you can easily distinguish where one quad uh, stops and another one starts. And we're going to try to avoid that. So what we need to do is make sure all the quads line up. I'm selecting all the, uh, the left quads and pressing SX0. That makes them all line up. Select the right one, SX0. And that makes it all line up along the x-axis. I'm going to also do that with the top pieces. SY0, SY0. All right, so now they're all lined up, but they still don't seamlessly transition from one to the next. So first I'm going to select the, uh, the top right quad and we're going to have to flip the UVs for that. So we're going to flip it horizontally. So we're going to UVs, mirror, x-axis. And look, now it transitions nicely from one to the next. I'm also going to do that from the bottom left. This one I'm going to mirror on the y-axis. Oh, it didn't work because I didn't have the uh, quads 
UV selected. Let me do that again. All right, so that's looking good. One more to do. This corner one, you want to flip in both directions. You're going to mirror on the x-axis, and you are going to mirror on the y-axis. All right, so now we have a pretty nice, tileable uh, set of quads. Um, most of the time, you'll probably want to extend it over a larger region, so I'm going to extend these uh, set of quads. Alt-Z, make sure it goes into the uh, texture rendering view. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this. Um, Shift-D will duplicate it. Then I'm going to press G to move it. And hold Control so it moves uh, along the... It moves at fixed points so it will all line up nicely. Then I'm going to oops, I'm gonna do the same, duplicate it again. And one more time. All right, so now this is a pretty large area. This should do for a game environment. Maybe it's a uh, some hills, so, and we can have the water running through there. Um, Another trick is uh, these are all separate objects, so I'm going to join them. But you will also notice I'm going to oops, sorry, I'm going to select the vertices. Uh, they aren't actually connected. So another trick for that is to select everything and just hit remove doubles, and that removed 11 vertices and also helped us by connecting those vertices. So now I have a large tileable texture and I could go in and um, I actually planned this to be a, a pier out in the water, a, a bit of a rock piling if you will, um, but it could also be a sand dune. Let me uh, go into sculpt mode and uh, show you what we could do with that. So I'm going to make some dunes here. And you don't want to, if I were to tile this texture over a larger area, um, then you would be able to diff clearly see the different textures, but this amount of tiling, it's, what are there, uh, there are 16 tiles. You can't really notice where one tile starts and the other begins. You can kind of see these light patterns, they're repeated, but uh, it's over a large enough distance that it tricks the, uh, the eye. Um, okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know if I wasn't doing that in the most efficient manner possible. It was simply the manner that I've found that works in Blender, uh, but anyone's feedback is, is, is welcome. Okay, thanks.